Welcome to this evening's Sounding of Retreat at Horse Guards. The video that you're about to see records a very contemporary regiment and it will give you a feel for what the regiment has achieved in its first decade of service. It's a regiment that is composed of five regular battalions and the video clearly shows the opportunity that exists in them. It has two reserve battalions which have a very close relationship with our regular battalions Indeed, they're paired in terms of the way they deliver their capability. You'll see some of the operations that the regiment has been involved in, particularly in Afghanistan. And you'll also get a feel for the very close connection that we have with our veterans and with the communities whence the regiment is drawn. For while we are a national regiment, we are also a regiment that has a very close linkage with the districts, regions, counties, whence our forming regiments were drawn. You'll see much of our cadets in the video. We're very proud of our cadet movement and the linkage that our regulars and reserves have to the cadet movement. And finally, you'll get a feel for what really matters this evening, and that is the bugle. For that is how we have traditionally communicated on the battlefield, and that will come forth in this video. Descendants of Zeus, rubba pom pom, rubba rubba pom pom, rubba pom pom, all rifles salute. I joined the Rifles because I was looking for a sense of adventure. I was looking to join a regiment that was at the cutting edge of the modern army, and I was looking to play lots of sport, go to lots of places, and be around like minded people. Since I've joined the Rifles, I've been on operations to both Afghanistan and Iraq. I've been on exercises across the world in countries such as Belize, Canada, France, Germany, Cyprus, and I've had uh, opportunities to meet various different types of people and uh, really get a huge amount uh, out of the army. We've recently returned from a large exercise in, in Kenya. Um, six weeks training in the middle of nowhere, which was great fun and really demanding. Uh, we're about to send uh, a company group and battalion headquarters out to Romania. Uh, we're preparing to send troops to the Falkland Islands for a couple of months. We're conducting counter-poaching tasks in Gabon. And at the same time, we're preparing for an imminent deployment on UN operations. I uh, joined the Rifles because I believe that they're the heart and soul of the infantry. The fact that you don't have a desk job and it's so unpredictable and exciting. To be a good rifleman, you need a good sense of humour, a good sense of crack. For in the face of adversity, you can carry on with a smile the fact that um, you're willing to push yourself to new limits constantly. Uh, I've learned loads of skills. Discipline being up there, because before I joined the army, uh, yeah. I can imagine most of us were little, uh, little terrorists. Confidence, working as a team, by far, I just, I'll fit right into anywhere. If they apply a positive attitude into everything they do, whether that's fitness, whether that's soldiering or marksmanship, then the rest of it will fall into place and they will learn with that right attitude. Pretty central to the, to the regiment, uh, to the rifles, is the quality of the young officers we recruit. We need uh, young people um, who really want to care for the soldiers under their command and who have a burning passion to find talent where it lies and to make absolutely the, the most of that talent they possibly can. We want people who are going to contribute to the, the fabric of the regiment, um, people who have a hinterland, I suppose, people who have some interests and skills outside the narrow lane of the army. There's a nice old phrase that, you know, genius and good ideas is not the preserve of the officer's mess. And I think we want officers and senior NCOs and warrant officers who think that they want to be getting many of the answers from the riflemen. We understand that good ideas don't have rank. You can make your own mistakes instead of being told what to do. So you're kind of like an independent person. I love the way that, that the riflemen do their business. Um, they're, they're thinking men. I can count on them to, to give me their opinion. Um, they don't just fall into line or follow the chain of command. Every rifleman thinks for himself. Shooting is, is such a key skill for all soldiers and it's something that we in the rifles particularly pride ourselves on. Sniping is very important to us. Our history for many years has been about getting in front of the main body and, and finding out what the enemy is doing. We're looking at ways of reinventing that with modern technology to make sure that we safeguard that historical ethos and tradition. Everything I am today is because I joined the reserves. 
The reserves have given me some great opportunities. I've just come back from Ascari Storm in Kenya, where I had the extraordinary privilege of leading a platoon on live fire attacks into the sunken village system that they had there and working integrated with two rifles, which was an amazing opportunity. The reserves um, gave me the opportunity to set up my own company. Um, I used my bounty, a whole thousand pounds. I used my qualification as a physical training instructor to set up the UK's first outdoor fitness company. So once you've navigated yourself through difficult terrain and you've fought through complex battle situations where things are changing and you're having to manage riflemen and manage changing situations, when you then return to doing your daily job and something happens like a train breaks down or your cameraman doesn't turn up, you're much more capable of dealing with those challenges in a reasoned and capable fashion. Joining the reserves gives yourself a confidence, team spirit, the ability to look after others and the importance of looking after others as they will look after you and just generally that sort of camaraderie that you get when uh, you're all in the same ditch in the rain together and you can have a laugh about it. I thoroughly recommend the reserves for anybody that's got a sense of adventure, likes to challenge and has a sense of humour. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time in Seven Rifles. They've got the appetite and the desire to be a rifleman uh, and again because they've got that positive mental attitude when they go on tour or an exercise with the regulars uh, because they want to be there then they've got something to offer. When you go on operations your training really does kick in. Going on operations is, is not all good. Um, there are good times, there are some very, very bad times. Um, but having the pride and the knowledge that you are helping to do something that not anyone else can do um, is, is wholly satisfying. You join the army as a young man uh, to travel the world, you know, to, to go on operations. Uh, and I'm, I've been fortunate enough to serve in a generation where we've done that. And in my early days, we did Northern Ireland, the Balkans, Sierra Leone. And then the last 10 years were obviously dominated by Iraq and Afghanistan. So that's definitely is something that when I eventually leave the army, that I'll never forget. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll take up with me that it was the, the, the best and worst times I've been in the infantry. Well, my very first operation uh, was in Northern Ireland. It, it was a great excitement uh, as a young soldier. And I would say that excitement is still there. Uh, it doesn't matter what rank you are or how old an individual is, we still get the buzz being with the most junior soldiers, either riflemen, to the most senior soldiers with the battalion, either command and officer. To coin a phrase, it's all about doing extraordinary things with ordinary people. And that's the thing that, that makes riflemen um, unique. Spent uh, about four, four months in Afghanistan before uh, walking on the wrong bit of ground and uh, uh, ended up getting uh, injured. What's been wonderful to see is that the rifles have continued to uh, support myself and, uh, and, and everyone who leaves the, um, the rifles uh, continues to have that link back, with, back into the regiment. I joined the army in 2007. Uh, first I went to my battalion which was in Northern Ireland. Then there was a deployment to Afghanistan which was Herrick 10. Uh, the beginning of 2009. From there, unfortunately, I never made it back all in one piece and I, uh, I was injured. From there, I went on to um, complete marathons, Olympic sized triathlons, half marathons. Um, all this is done in camouflage tutu and a bit of war paint to scare the natives. Even when you are a casualty, even when you are out of the army, you are never out of the rifles. It is a family that will be with you for life. I personally believe that I would have suffered a lot more if it wasn't for, i.e. care for casualties, having the support of the regiment, the battalions, the men that surround themselves once they get a wounded man, you know. I've started doing a little bit of skeleton bobsleigh on the Paralympic side. I fully recommend it to anyone, whether you've got two legs or no legs, it's, uh, it's uh, equally uh, exhilarating, I suppose. The Red Force have been now having a connection with Newham since about 1859, I think. This. So it's you know, a fairly long connection. And, and what they are to us is an exemplar to our community. When we ask people to put themselves in harm's way, we, it's important we understand they're in our community. They're not somebody from somewhere else. They're part of us and they're part of our community. And we need to understand that so we understand the significance of some of the things when we ask them to do things. It helps us to better understand the significance of what we're asking. So I joined in 2005, 
and uh, I served until 2010. Having been a rifleman, I think there are two key attributes that really helped me in the, the world outside. Uh, the first of those was um, taking responsibility, which sounds incredibly simple when you're in the army, but outside the army you'll be astonished by how few people are prepared to step up. And secondly, teamwork, which sounds incredibly obvious again, but actually it's one of those things that needs to be built. My time in the rifles, uh, a lot of the time, you know, has been high pressured operations where you have to really uh, be a master of critical thinking. Uh, and in a complex context like South Sudan, I've had to use those skills on numerous occasions. I joined the cadets about three years ago now. Best decision. <laughs>